guys, it's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. In the spirit of trying to bring to you weekly videos once again, <laughs> don't mind the fact that I am still in my work attire. I have just gotten off work. You have to go back to work right after this. So, you know, we're, we're just rolling with it. We're trying to get back into the swing of things. That's right. And we are excited, even though we were, well, you're in your work attire and I will be going back to work. We are excited <laughs> to bring you this week's video, which is going to be talking about the newly released projections from NOAA, the National Weather Service, and the Climate Prediction Center. Is it the Climate Prediction Center? Hold on. It is. It is the Climate <laughs> Prediction Center. We're going to talk about their 2023 Atlantic Hurricane predictions. There's a, a few things to talk about. We're going to talk about the number of storms. Okay. We're also going to talk about how many hurricanes and how many uh, major hurricanes they are predicting. We will not be talking about landfall because they do not talk about specific landfall. It's right. only on the generation of the storm itself. So just to be clear, it's just the prediction of the generation of the storm, not necessarily the location. And we'll also talk about any improvements that they have planned for this year. And there are a bunch of improvements, as well as how El Nino will impact the hurricane season this year. But before we get started, Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the video along the way. If you would like to learn more about meteorology and you find what we're talking about really interesting, check out our School of Weather. It is a series of online courses if you want to sit in the comfort of your own home and maybe learn a little bit about meteorology and weather. Let's get into NOAA's Atlantic Hurricane Season Predictions. The Atlantic Hurricane Season goes from June 1st to November 30th. They predict a near normal amount of hurricane activity this year with a 40% chance of a near normal season, a 30% chance of an above normal season, and a 30% chance of a below normal season. Well, I guess you can't get any more average than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am... <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30, 40. Right down the middle. I can think they could have done 33, 33, 33, you know? I mean, at least they're kind of leaning one way or the other. Well, yeah, they are leaning. They're leaning in average. They gave it seven more percentage points than below or above. The math is The there. math is mathing, people. NOAA is forecasting a range of 12 to 17 total named storms, winds of 39 miles per hour or higher. Of those, five to nine could become hurricanes with winds of 74 miles per hour or higher including one to four major hurricanes, category three, four, or five, with winds of 111 miles per hour or higher. Okay, so just to recap, because some of that could be a little confusing. So they're forecasting 12 to 17 named storms, and then out of that 12 to 17, five to nine, they're predicting to become hurricanes. And out of that five to nine, one to four of those would become major hurricanes. That's what they're predicting. Yep. So it's not uh, a cumulative 12 to 17 plus another right. plus another. It's all within that 12 to 17, and there's subsections within those. NOAA has a 70% confidence in these ranges. The upcoming Atlantic hurricane season is expected to be less active than recent years due to competing factors, some that suppress storm development and some that fuel it, driving this year's overall forecast to be a near normal season. So NOAA is seeing that there's a few factors that could really help build tropical systems and a few factors that could really diminish tropical systems and make it so that they don't form. So, I mean, that's a pretty good reason, a pretty good logic there as to why they're going straight that's down right. the middle here with an average of, you know, it could be or, right. or it could not be, you know, you know, 30, 30, 40. 
That's and right. There's some good logic behind it. That's right. Now, also remember, even though it's a 40% chance of it being an average storm season, there's a 30% below and 30% above. Mm -hmm. So if the parameters work out during the summer where some of the limiting factors uh, actually don't come through, then we could be looking more at the 30% higher than average. Uh, that percentage could increase because those limiting factors have decreased and vice versa. So sure. just kind of keep in mind that based on what they're seeing right now, it looks to be an average season. And that's also why it's like they're going with a 12 to 17 named storms. So if we kind of get a pop where the limiting factor is kind of going away, we could see closer to the 17 or if it's like, yeah, no, the ocean and the atmosphere, is, it's just not working out more towards that 12. And one other thing to keep in mind, and that is, is that even if you have a below normal season, it does not necessarily mean that there's going to be less intense hurricanes. Right. Just like if you have an above normal season, it doesn't mean you're going to have more intense hurricanes. So just keep that in mind. Setting the stage for the season. After three hurricane seasons with La Nina present, NOAA scientists predict a high potential for El Nino to develop this summer, which can suppress Atlantic hurricane activity. El Nino's potential influence on storm development could be offset by favorable conditions local to the tropical Atlantic Basin. These conditions include the potential for an above normal West African monsoon, which produces African easterly waves and leads to the development of some of the stronger and long-lived Atlantic storms. Another favorable condition includes warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea, which creates more energy to fuel storm development. Now, El Nino and La Nina, if you haven't seen already, we have another video going deeper into that. If you've already seen that video, you may be like, hey, I remember something about uh, El Nino being good for hurricanes or La Nina being good or bad for hurricanes. We're just talking in this video about Atlantic hurricane seasons. So, El Nino and La Nina do have a different effect on the Pacific hurricane season. Okay, now, to get into the tech part of Meteotech weather, we've got a couple of things for you. One of the exciting things about the new technology for this year is in late June, they have a new forecast model for hurricanes that's coming out, and it's about 10 to 15% better in its accuracy compared to the existing operational models. So that's going to be interesting to see how it handles this year. This is a very exciting time for all of us nerds who really love the <laughs> technology side of things. It's like, oh my gosh, we're getting new things, and it's going to be better, and, and we're going to be able to see this, and, and hopefully it's like more accurate here. and. If you're a nerd, you understand. That's well. right. And to continue in that nerd vibe, the supercomputing that they use to run these models, they've actually beefed them up to run at 20% more capacity to run more models, and the models have more complexity to them, so they've beefed up that hardware and everything to do 20% more this season. Yes, uh, put a finger down if you are looking on tropical tidbits and trying to find a forecast model and it takes forever to load and then it loads like one little spot every like 15 minutes and it takes you four and a half hours to just get a model and, and by that point you've lost interest in what you're doing. <laughs> the hurricane's already at your doorstep by this time. <laughs> it took too long to load the model. <laughs> so hopefully this will be 20% better. That's right. And there are a bunch of other cool techie improvements and upgrades that they are making, and we're not going to go into the specifics, but they will pop up on the screen here. Here's some statements from some pretty important people, like the Secretary of Commerce, as well as the FEMA Administrator. Thanks to the Commerce Department and NOAA's critical investments this year in scientific and technological advancements in hurricane modeling, NOAA will be able to deliver even more accurate forecasts, helping ensure communities have the information they need to prepare for and respond to the destructive economic and ecological impacts of Atlantic hurricanes. As we saw with Hurricane Ian, it only takes one hurricane to cause widespread devastation and upend lives. So regardless of the number of storms predicted this season, it is critical that everyone understand their risk and heed the warnings of state and local officials. Whether you live on the coast or further inland, hurricanes can cause serious impacts to everyone in their path. 
So there you have it, Noah's 2023 Atlantic Hurricane season prediction. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button and follow us over on our social media, Facebook and Instagram, if you want to see some behind the scenes and some of our weather adventures. While you are checking out the description box, hit up our website in our School of Weather. And until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. How about... <laughs> <laughs>